As indictments continue to mount against Donald Trump, we are looking into who is behind the strategy that unloaded all of this upon America. Nancy Pelosi now emerging as a front runner. Very interesting article came out showing her in this dark demonic portrait mode, explaining that she was operating behind the scenes to create the Trump indictment, not impeachment. Remember, Nancy Pelosi was the former Speaker of the House. She was responsible as the Speaker or leading the Democrats when they were in charge. They did impeach Donald Trump twice. That's within her jurisdiction. Something that is not within her jurisdiction is criminal law. That's done by the executive branch. So what the heck is Nancy Pelosi playing an essential role for in a historic indictment? We've seen for a long time, more evidence mounting. Joe Biden told Merrick Garland to go and prosecute Trump. Stop sitting on the fence and being a weenie about it. Special counsel Jack Smith is not an independent counsel. He reports to Merrick Garland. Even the media confirms that. So one after another, we see FBI weaponized against Trump, executive branch weaponized against against Trump, the legislative branch weaponized against Trump, as these people all sit around and tell us that this was not a political attack. The story tells differently. They say, if you were to drop a list of the people most responsible for the latest indictment of Trump, okay, you'd have Trump, you'd have prosecutors, Republicans in Congress have a role, but you can't tell the story of Trump's historic indictment without Pelosi. Pelosi, then Speaker of the House, insisted on a congressional inquiry following January 6th. She created the committee that is illegally constituted under House rules, should have had 13 members on it, only had nine, should have had five Republicans, only had two, should have had input on the Republicans who were appointed to the committee, didn't. They just threw on Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. And it was the work of the select committee that finally appears to have spurred a reluctant Justice Department into action. So Pelosi nudged the committee, which nudged the Justice Department, if you believe that. I don't think they're reluctant at all. They've got two of them going, setting in motion a more intense phase of criminal scrutiny. The resulting indictment closely tracks with the committee's work and the evidence presented by the committee. So she's acting as like a prosecutor exploiting the corrupt operation of Congress. Pelosi told the intelligencer, New York Mag, says, I knew on January 6th, Trump had committed a crime. The author says, I wondered what was going through her head as someone who played an essential role in bringing about the most important criminal prosecution in the history of our country. What a psychopath thing to say. Your political opponents are bringing about the most important criminal prosecutions in the history of our country, which just happens to be your political opponent. And I was curious when it had occurred to her that Trump was actually a criminal. She was one of Trump's number one opponents. She went toe to toe with him is what this journalist says. The rioters ransacked her office when she was making her film documentary with her daughter saying, I've been waiting for this. Pelosi impeached him again. She was also colluding with General Milley, talking about the 25th Amendment, telling him to call China in the thing. To this day, Pelosi gets under Trump's skin. But long before January 6th itself, Pelosi had been preparing for Trump to try to disrupt the transfer of power. I'm sure she was preparing. During the election, I thought he's going to try to pull a stunt and we have to try to have as many states in the Democratic column as possible. She told me, admitting, revealing some of her backroom deals, said that the House would have to move. Look at this. She told me, contemplating the possibility that Biden's victory might not be certified and that the House would have to move to an obscure procedure in which each state's congressional delegation would catch a single vote to determine the next president. Oh my gosh. Did somebody tell the FBI about this? You're telling me that Nancy Nancy Pelosi was doing contingency planning on an election so that if her guy wasn't a clear winner, that they would do something differently. Oh my God, this is crazy. It's almost like what the alternative electors were doing with Mike Pence. Everybody was preparing contingencies. Now, if she were a Republican, she might be being raided and investigated by the FBI for doing this. She's contemplating the possibility of a, of a different process. Trump promptly proceeded to validate that concern. Maybe she was responsible for her sergeant at arms for security there. She says, as we got closer to January 6th, I knew he was cooking up all these things. But what was he going to do about it? It was clear he knew he did not win the election. It was clear he had to disrupt. When we saw what he did on January 6th, I knew it was a crime, Pelosi said. What can be proven in court, I don't know, but I know he committed a crime that day. Now, after Biden got inaugurated, she organized what they call here was a total joke, a bipartisan 9-11 commission type hearing. Yeah, and they passed HR 503, which said 13 members, five Republicans who are appointed in consultation with the minority, which were the Republicans at the time. They didn't get five Republicans that they could agree upon. So Pelosi said to hell with you in the minority. And we're just going to appoint two Republicans that we like, Liz Cheney and Kinzinger. It wasn't bipartisan at all. In fact, it was in violation of their own house rules. We yielded on every point, Pelosi recalled, of the negotiation with her Republicans. We gave them an equal number of commission members, which we always have done. We did it because it was so awful for our country. It never happened. She says it turned out what was a historic miscalculation. Mitch McConnell blocked it in the Senate. Pelosi, And so Pelosi took it back to the house. Pelosi then shifted gears. So she 
she created a select committee in the House. Pelosi quickly decided negotiations aren't going anywhere. She said Kevin McCarthy wanted to appoint members who would, quote, totally undermine the committee. You mean what? What do you mean? Like, have an alternative opinion? You mean Jim Jordan would ask a difficult question? So Pelosi just said to hell with them. Okay, she recalled. That's really nice. So you get consultation as who to serve. I've consulted with you and I've said no. That's the power of the speaker. So she just fired all of them. She then assembled a group of Democratic people, including Republican Vice Chair Liz Cheney, six other Democrats, and Adam Kinzinger. And she called it a bipartisan committee. Did not take long for observers to conclude McCarthy monumentally misplayed his hand. They were not riveting. Everybody thought that they were a joke. So then all of that, which Pelosi created, she worked to ensure that members would, it's almost like she created a little bit of a grand jury. She said the quality of the membership was one of the best presentations in the history of our country. It was boring. It was scripted. They were all reading from teleprompters and it didn't have even any adversarial proceedings. And in fact, they put on a bunch of liars too. Clavicle girl comes to mind who said Trump was, I think, ripping the Secret Service clavicle apart as he was trying to commandeer the van. Meanwhile, there were questions about what the Justice Department was going to do to address the criminal culpability here. The DOJ was not pursuing those same threads. I asked Pelosi whether this period, whether she had tried to speak with Merrick Garland or Biden or anyone in the White House. No, she said, telling me she did not think it was appropriate for her to try to influence the department behind closed doors. I'm sure. I did want them to pay attention. I hope that we got their attention. That's why the presentation had to be the way it was, which was totally fake. We couldn't have people like the Republicans who would be disruptive, disruptive, disruptive. Too much was at stake. They had to fake this whole story. There was palpable anxiety among House Democrats when the DOJ wasn't making progress, when they weren't investigating Trump directly. The Post published an 8,000 word essay. It said it took more than a year for them to get some steam on this. And now Trump has been indicted. She says at the end of the day, we have to see what happens. If he were to be president, it would be a criminal enterprise in the White House. So this woman has been spearheading the removal of Donald Trump for a long time. Here she is on with CNN talking about some of this. So you can hear it right from her. So you have a singular experience of January 6th. Um, as you read the indictment, what was your reaction and what jumped out to you? It's heartbreaking for our country to have a president of the United States. Heartbreaking. Uh, with this list of charges against him. And I just want to that commend- That you guys all created. The, uh, January 6th committee, the House committee, what? bipartisan committee. It wasn't bipartisan. Benny Thompson and Liz Cheney and the, all the members of the committee and the staff for the work that they did. They laid a foundation of facts about facts and the law and made a criminal referral to the Justice Department. They're not a grand jury. That was the end of December. That was in December of the end of last year, 2022. Uh, and not, we didn't know what we couldn't know. It wasn't uh, our role to know uh, what the Justice Department would do, if anything. So when it became but clear Biden that there would be criminal charges made, uh, it's interesting to see how similar they are to some of the charges recommended by the January 6th. Mm -hmm. It is interesting, isn't it? And I commend it? again the committee. Yeah. I'm so proud of them, their courage, their bravery, and the courage really uh, of all of those who are making the case now. I'm watching of course, her eyes. the uh, former What's president going on there? is she reading? Uh, innocent until proven guilty. No one is above the law. And the assault that they are making on the rule of law in our country is really a sad thing. Brings, I'm sure it would bring tears to the eyes of our founders. I'm sure. The yeah, they would have a lot of, of the House, Your successor, Republican Congressman Kevin McCarthy, he responded to the latest indictment by posting on the social media site formerly known as Twitter, quote, House Republicans will continue to uncover the truth about Biden Incorporated and the true two-tiered system of justice, unquote. He went, he went on uh, from there. What's your response to uh, Speaker McCarthy trying to refocus this to Hunter Biden and President Biden? What I would say is, and to remind the American people, that on the night when it was very clear to the Republican leadership and the House of Representatives and in the United States Senate that there was an incitement instigated by the President of the United States on the Capitol, on the Congress, more importantly, on the Constitution of the United States. They saw the danger, the danger that we were in. They saw the lack of response from the President for not sending the National Guard, which we pleaded for and pleaded Stephen for and pleaded Sun for. Stephen said that. And Chuck Schumer and I kept pleading with him to also to minutes. call off oh, his troops, but to send in the National Guard. They saw the danger. They made statements about it that recognized the involvement of President Trump. And then they all, so many of them, majority of them in the House voted to not, to reject peaceful transfer of government, accepting the uh, the numbers that the American, the vote of the American people as demonstrated by the Electoral College vote. It was heartbreaking to Total scam. all the tragedy of that night. And then to see them say, okay, 
we're not supporting the peaceful transfer of power in our country. You can just see how the different, they're almost setting up the dominoes. It's like, well, we know you were upset about the election, but then the riot happened. So now you shouldn't be upset about the election anymore. Wait a minute, how does that make sense? Just because there was a short riot that lasted like four hours means we should just forget about the election. The riot means that everything that we saw happen didn't happen just because of that thing that happened for a couple hours? Uh, no. That means more to me than any of this nonsense that he's engaged in now. We've it's also seen a similar response Biden from uh, many of the Republican presidential hopefuls. I want you to take a listen to Florida Governor uh, Ron DeSantis talking uh, to Fox. One of the reasons I'm wanting for President Harris is to uh, reconstitutionalize the federal government and these agencies that have become weaponized, the FBI, the DOJ, uh, against political opponents. A D.C. jury would indict a ham sandwich and convict a ham sandwich if it was a Republican ham sandwich. That's this is the largely the response from Republican um, Republicans in the House and Republican presidential candidates with the exception of Chris Christie, Asa Hutchinson, and Will Hurd, uh, attacking the Justice Department instead of talking about the, the allegations made in the indictment. Well, what's your response? Well, you know what, Jake? Every time we want to talk about the Biden crime family, you people only want to talk about Trump. So when it's Trump indictment and Republicans talk about Biden, that's totally fair. Because every time a Biden problem pops up, you talk about Trump. I'm not responding to them. I'm speaking, as I always have, with or without them. The rule of law is central to a democracy. The fact that the former president not anymore, it's not. was always attacking the rule of law in our country. And now these uh, par uh, are, these guys are uh, parroting that. Shame <laughs> on them. But again, let's not talk about them. Let's just talk about our Constitution, our country, our respect for the rule of law. And by the way, while he was undermining the rule of law, he was also undermining a pillar of our democracy. What? Part of the First Amendment to the Constitution. What is it? Freedom of the press. So if he can diminish the role of the press and the mind of the people to know what the facts are. What are you talking and about? And can diminish the By role calling the press of the rule enemy of, of the people? In our country, we're on a path that is not a good one for our democracy. So let's not spend too much time <laughs> on them. Let's spend time on where we need to be as a country. Well, tell us. Let's spend time on the greatness of Joe Biden's administration and what he's done for the country, creation What's he done? of jobs, cutting unemployment in uh, half okay. and the rest. And, you know, you, you bring up a political question by talking about their political candidates for president. What is Jake thinking right now? Look at him. Let's, if you want to talk about that, let's talk about Who good Who is this things. crazy woman give on my show right now? Let's give people hope. But there is a moment of tragedy in our country in these days and actually days leading up to now because there have been other indictments. The former person who held the office of president of the United States had no respect she for the She just went back to Trump. She just went back to Trump. She said we should move on. No respect. She just went full circle free, back to Trump. A press in our country to tell the story. One Didn't she just say, let's talk I'm about Joe Biden? The way the press talks about me, but she that just took us all the way back to Trump. That, that should diminish the freedom of the press to speak. So we're at a place, we have an opportunity, all right. a real opportunity to save our country and to do it in a unifying way, to be respectful of people who may have voted for him, may have been, for whatever reason. How much that wine they did. did they have in that green and room? And that's back their there. vote, and that's their right. But they should not be dragged into the gutter with him. <laughs> in terms of his undermining the United States of America, our democracy, our rule of law, our, again, our constitution. Given- um, All right, so enough of that. All right, so she's sauced up or something. Speaking of some serious hystericism, I wanna share this clip from Joe Brzezinski. He has this show on MSNBC where he hosts, uh, I think his wife hosts the show and he uh, is a sidekick or something, but absolute freak out moment from him. What if Trump wins? We're all gonna die. And, and what Baker says in the Wall Street Journal piece, Reverend Al, is if Republicans continue this line of thinking, if they continue their, their support for Donald Trump, they needn't fool themselves. A second Trump administration would destroy the Department of Justice, oh, would yeah. destroy the FBI, yes. would destroy the federal government's yeah. <laughs> rule of law, would destroy oh. judicial independence. It would destroy the third branch of America's government. It would rip to shreds Madisonian democracy. They need to understand what they're doing, and perhaps they do. I'm just trying to figure out what is so important about this former reality TV host that they're willing to literally throw away Madisonian democracy to defend him. That is what really uh, has troubled me, is that it's clear that you can have political debate, those of us considered on the left, those on the right. But when you see what is going on now,
now. I think the New York Times is a story about it this morning, where you have the actual institutions of government that would be totally altered by the politics of today, particularly if Trump were to win. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, are these people really saying that's what they want to advocate? Yes. The yes. absolute destruction of yes. the Justice Department yes. as we know it yes. and all of the yes. institutional yes. law pillars yes. as we know it, because that's where they're going. Yes. They are yes, undermining I know. the very yes, principles that the country was founded on. No, 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 weirdos. We are wanting a restoration of those principles. We actually would like justice in America. Just because we have a Justice Department doesn't mean we have justice in America. America, we're all huge fans of equal protection and due process of the law and presumption of innocence. We love not prosecuting our political opponents like partisan hacks. We're big fans of that. What has happened is these institutions have been corrupted and perverted by your people and your party, exactly resulting in what we see today. So absolutely, the current form of the DOJ, no, we don't want that. FBI, no, not okay with that. Any government bureaucracies that are crapping all over our, you know, I'm getting uh, vulgar here today, our right need to be held accountable. They need to be a part of the conversation about dramatic restoration, reform, replacement, removal, gone. And that is democracy as opposed to autocracy. And I think that is one thing to be caught up in the heat of a campaign. It's another thing to say that I want to completely overall how we govern and what we stand for as a nation. And that is the line they have began to cross uh, in the politics of some of those that are running in the Republican primary. No, no, no. No, you guys are prosecuting your political opponents. We didn't cross that threshold. You started it. This is an institutional crisis for them. This is a legitimacy crisis. And this, I think, is only the first inning. We are just getting started. They don't even know the damage that they are bringing upon themselves. They're in this legitimacy, doom loop, downward spiral. Every time they want to bolster their legitimacy, they go and they do something like attacking their political opponent. But they don't realize, because they're so dumb, that when they attack their political opponents and they use these institutions, that once had some legitimacy actually undermine their legitimacy. Everybody recognizes they are corrupt, but they keep doing it. They're going to try again for a fourth indictment. We're going to see how it works out for them. So they're destroying their own institutions. It's not us doing anything. We're just sitting here. We're just commenting on this scam show trial situation that's happening in this country. They're doing it, not us.